This is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. And what we just talked about was the rapture and how the saints are going to get glorified bodies at the rapture. We're going to be taken out of this world before this time period begins that people refer to as the tribulation. But the Bible calls it Daniel's 70th week. The Bible calls it time, the time of Jacob's trouble. So we're going to look at that in this study. This horrible, terrifying time period. And the first half, I believe you would call the beginning of sorrows. And the people on this earth during this time are going to say peace and safety. In Matthew 24... 5 through 8, it says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So I like to call the first half of this time period, the beginning of sorrows. That's a good way to describe it. And on earth during this time, they're going to say peace and safety, like they say in 1 Thessalonians 5.3. So I want to go through the time period that most people refer to as the tribulation and show you the events of this time period and how they connect with Matthew 24, which also shows you the events of this time period. And we're going to be looking at Pretty much Revelation chapter 5 through 19. But first, Revelation chapter 6. I'm going to show you the first seal. This will reveal the Antichrist, also called the man of sin, also called the son of perdition, also called the mystery of iniquity, also called the little horn and the beast. And he's coming out on a white horse to counterfeit the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the beginning of the Antichrist's false kingdom. He is a false king in God's game of thrones. Now, Revelation 6, 1 through 2, the lamb's going to open the seals. Notice it's the lamb opening the seals. This is his wrath. We're safe from wrath through him. He's already pulled us out of the earth. In Revelation 6, 1 through 2, it says, And when I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder... And one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. Now, you'll notice this isn't Jesus Christ because Jesus has a sword, and a crown was given unto him. Notice this isn't Jesus. Jesus has many crowns in Revelation 19. And it says, And he went forth conquering and to conquer. So here you see in God's game of thrones, the Antichrist trying to set up his false kingdom. He's wanting to be the greatest. Even though he comes in peaceably at first, he will have to knock some guys off to get on the top in God's game of thrones. He's a counterfeit Christ, and he has forerunners paving the way for him right now as we speak. And this is why Paul says the mystery of iniquity doth already work in 2 Thessalonians 2 7. This is why John said in 1 John 2 18, even now are there many antichrists. And this is also why Jesus said in Matthew 24 4, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And Daniel eleven twenty one says, he shall come in peaceably. That's the man of sin, the antichrist. And he also, during this first half will make a covenant with the Jewish people for seven years, but he will break the covenant in the middle of those seven years. In Daniel 9.27, it speaks of this and says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even unto the consummation. And that be determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So in that verse, a week is referring to seven years. And in the midst of the week, he will cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. So he breaks the covenant in the middle of the seven years. So this covenant only lasts about three and a half years. And I believe <clears throat> around the beginning of the tribulation, 
you're going to have the 144,000 sealed in their foreheads. Now, uh, a lot of Christians differ on how they view when these events take place, and that's completely fine. We just know that they are going to take place. It's hard to nail down exactly when they're going to take place. You know, a lot of people have their theories. I have my theories. I don't claim to know these things 100% that this is the actual order of the events. We're just trying our best to learn what's going to take place during that time. But I believe around the beginning of this time period, the 144,000 are sealed in their foreheads. In Revelation 7, 2 through 4, it says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And Revelation 14.4 describes them again. It says, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. So these are the true 144,000 that the Jehovah's Witnesses today pre pretend to be. But you know that the Jehovah's Witnesses are not the 144,000 because these 144,000 are all male Jewish virgins and that would eliminate most of the people today claiming to be a part of the 144,000. They aren't male, Jewish, and virgins. And on top of that, these 144,000 are in a completely different time period. This is the time of Jacob's trouble. This is Daniel's 70th week. Also notice they are sealed in their forehead. A born-again believer isn't just sealed in his forehead. Showing this is a completely different class of saints. And these men will preach during this time period of the time of Jacob's trouble. They aren't church-age saints. Now, the first seal was the Antichrist on a white horse. Now, the second seal is a red horse. And this is war. In Revelation 6, 3-4, through 4, it says, And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that set thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So this is why the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24, verse 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So the red horse is war. Well, there's going to be much war. This is a bloody time, and men will, many men will have to go to war. Uh, so many people will be killed by other people, not just in war, but on the streets, because Matthew twenty four twelve says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So that's the second seal, a red horse, and that's war. The first seal was the Antichrist on the white horse. Now the third seal, the black horse, this is famine. In Revelation 6, 5, it says, When he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. See, this is referring to a food shortage. There's going to be famine. In Matthew 24, 4 through it, it says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So this will also be a famine of hearing the word of God that Amos eight eleven prophesies about. Now, we're going to enter into the second half. We saw that the first half, the first three and a half years, the Antichrist comes in peaceably. He obtains the kingdom and God's game of thrones by flatteries. He's still a bad guy, but he's nowhere near as bad as he's going to be. See, what's going to happen to him is he's going to die. Somebody's going to assassinate him, and then he's going to resurrect. And he's going to come back literally full of the devil. And this will, that was the beginning of sorrows. This is going to start the Great Tribulation, where the covenant is broken with the Jews, 
And this is the last half of the seven years. So the first thing we see is the Antichrist is going to die and resurrect. In Revelation 13, 3 through 8, it says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? You see, they think he's the king of kings. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Now, forty and two months, that's three and a half years, showing that this has to be the last half. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And, I, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So that's the Antichrist resurrecting as the son of perdition, literally the devil in the flesh. Zechariah eleven seventeen describes the head wound where he's going to have a, a wound in his right eye. His right eye is going to be utter, utterly darkened. And then 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 4 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God and that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. The Antichrist is going to sit in the temple and claim to be God. Second Thessalonians 2, 8 through 12. And then shall that wicked be revealed. That wicked who's revealed is the Antichrist as the son of perdition who has died, resurrected, and he, he's been hindering from the, from the devil to completely manifest himself on the earth. But it says, Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. That's what he's going to use to deceive the whole world. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure and unrighteousness. And if you connect this with Matthew 24, look at Matthew 24, 15 through 16. It says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. See, the Jews are going to know that the Antichrist is a fake at this point. They're going to flee into the mountains. When they see the abomination of desolation, the Antichrist standing in the holy place claiming to be God. It says in Matthew 24, 21, For then shall be great tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So the covenant with the Jews is broken. This puts us in the middle of this time period. The deceived Jews will find out the Antichrist is a fake because he will claim to be God when he sits in the temple. They will find out he's a fake because of the mark of the beast. They know they're not supposed to put any markings in their flesh. But in Revelation 13, 16 through 18, it says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So they're going to realize this guy is a fake, and they're going to, run for the mountains i believe also during the middle part of this time period the tribulation you're going to have the two witnesses rise up moses and elijah revelation 11 3 through 6 says and i will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth these are the two olive trees and the two and the two candlesticks standing before the god of the earth and if any man will hurt them 
fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. So the two witnesses are most likely Mo Elijah and Moses. The devil and Michael disputed about the body of Moses in the book of Jude because they knew Moses was coming back. And Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind to heaven without dying. And he is most likely coming back. They already came back once when Jesus Christ was on the Mount of Transfiguration. Elijah is even said to come back before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Elijah and Moses both have powers that the two witnesses have that are described in Revelation 11. For example, turning the water to blood, stopping the rain, uh, and smiting the earth with all plagues. But that's the two witnesses. And now we finally see the fourth seal, the pale horse, which is death. In Revelation 6, 7 through 10, it says, When he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So more war, more people starving, and people being killed with the beasts of the earth. Now the old timers used to say that they believed that the animals would come out of the woods in the last days. So you know when when uh, when one of them maybe hit a deer or something in the road, they would say, "You know we're in the last days," because the the wild animals are coming out into the cities. And I don't think that's completely right, but old timers get it pretty close many times. It's not completely right because. We're not in the tribulation. And this verse happens in the tribulation. And also it doesn't seem like they would just be coming out of the wilderness or the forest. But also it seems that the fear of man will be taken off the animals. And they will actually be used to go after people in this tribulation time period. And now the fifth seal you have saints martyred for the faith. It says in Revelation 6, 9, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? They are praying for the second coming, where the Lord will come back and avenge their blood. So you can see that there's going to be faithful saints during this time period. And now starts the trumpets, the first trumpet. Revelation 8, 7 through 12, And the first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees was burned up, and all green grass was burned up. Now this proves that God isn't part of the green movement. He doesn't care about the trees. Now the second trumpet, and the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. I'd hate to be on a cruise ship at that time. Now the third trumpet, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. So notice the waters are made bitter and they're deadly and i believe this hints that the signs of the apostles will come back and the saints of the earth will be able to drink any deadly thing as in mark 16 without it hurting them now the fourth trumpet and the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars so as the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise. The phrase, are you afraid of the dark, would take on a whole new meaning during this time. Not to mention what's going to be creeping around in the dark at this time. And then you have the fifth trumpet. Now we see the fifth trumpet. In Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 through 5. This is one of the scary ones i mean very scary for people that are going to be on the earth during this time it says and the fifth angel sounded and i saw a star fall from heaven into the earth you see john literally sees all these things because he's been taken forward in time to see the 
tribulation. And it says, To him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So this angel gets the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit. And there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. So these locusts, these devilish locusts that come up out of the bottomless pit, this is going to be literal hell on earth, and they're going to torment men for five months. And the people are going to seek death, but they won't find it. Talk about a true monster movie in real life. Hollywood never thought of something so scary. And then you have the sixth trumpet, Revelation 9, 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. So these evil angels bound in the great river Euphrates are going to be loosed. On the earth, and the four angels were loosed, which were pre prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of iron, and of jacinth, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, and smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth, and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, it repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which can neither see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So you can imagine the terror this event will bring, and yet men are so hardened through sin that they still don't repent of the wickedness in the earth. This also proves that there are still going to be people around to murder, commit sorceries, fornicate, and steal things, even after this is over, and they'll be looting at an all-time high. You can imagine, uh, people just got slaughtered by some angels, and yet these people are still going to be breaking in Foot Locker, getting the new Jordans. They're still going to be concerned with fornicating after this bloodbath just went on. This is because... Men are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. But next, after this sixth trumpet, you see the vials. The first vial in Revelation 16, 1 through 2. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And therefore it fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. So this will be way worse than the coronavirus. This stuff will get in people's clothes. It will get in their houses. It will be like leprosy. And all the big shots will have it because that's the ones that took the mark. And then the second vial in Revelation 16, 3, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. So when they could have let Jesus Christ free, the Jews said, His blood be upon us and on our children. That's what the Jews said. They said, Crucify him. And that's what they get. They get blood in this tribulation time period. Now the third vial, Revelation sixteen four through 7 And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, and wast, and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink. 
for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. So they're getting blood to drink. Their water's being turned to blood. Uh, the Lord's going to make them drunk in their own blood because, you know, they wanted the blood of Jesus shed. Revelation 16, 8 and 9, And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. So this is as close as it gets to feeling hell on earth. The phrase, it's hotter than hell outside, will take on a whole new meaning. Mix this with there being a shortage on water and water that you can't drink. Now the fifth vial in Revelation 16, 10, and 11 and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. Uh, the sixth vial, and the sixth angel uh, poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. He's going to gather them together so he can just kill them faster. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to, to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Once again, the unclean spirits are shown to influence the kings of this earth in God's game of thrones. And around this time, the Two witnesses will most likely be beheaded and raptured. The seventh vial brings in Armageddon. So when reading the book of Revelation, you're not going to see things in chronological order. You're going to see more than one account of the tribulation period. Just like the Gospels give you four accounts of the life of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Now notice how the seventh vial brings in Armageddon. And then we see the sixth seal and seventh trumpet do the same thing, showing that these things aren't chronolog in chronological order in this book. Now, Revelation 16, 15 through 21. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the sixth angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his, of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great... Hell out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. At the same time, the sixth seal seems to be the second coming as well. In, in Revelation 6, 12, it says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and though there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and every island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from him that sitteth on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb, from the, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So you see that the seventh vial and the sixth seal, both, shall, or the sixth vial, yeah, the seventh vial and the sixth seal, both show you the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though the sixth seal is back in Revelation 6.12, and then the seventh trumpet in Revelation 11 shows you the second coming, showing you that Revelation is not in chronological order. It gives more than one account of the tribulation. Now, Revelation 11:15 and 19, you have the seventh trumpet. 
And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power, and hast reigned, and the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged." And that thou shouldest re give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great. And shouldest destroy them, which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings, and voices, and thunderings, and an earthquake, and great hell. And that about sums it all up. What you have here is the worst time the world has ever seen. It's not as bad as hell. But it's as close as this world gets to seeing hell. And you don't want to be around during this time period. That's why you need to make sure that you're saved. Make sure you've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible's clear on how to be saved. Paul gave us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, where he told us that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died. He died by shedding his blood. He died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And Romans ten thirteen says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.